So for this one, we're going to introduce intercepts of a graph. Uh, and the intercepts of a graph are the points where it crosses the axes, uh, you know, where it crosses the y-axis or the x-axis. So how to find the x-intercept and how to find the y-intercept. Uh, let's remember uh, one of the exercises you did on the homework item from the, the beginning graphing ones from section 0.2 is what I called it, where at any point on the x-axis, what do you know about those points? Is it x is always equal to 0, or y is always equal to 0, or, or what? Uh, just to, I'll, I'll let you fill this in yourself, because you should know it. Uh, but the one I'm talking about here is from uh, item number 6, I believe number three here. So look at that. If, uh, look at your answer there to figure it out. And uh, pause it here to fill this in. If you already know the answers, then write it down and keep moving uh, because I'm going to tell you what the answers are now. Okay, now that you've paused it and given some answers, let's look at a graph here. Uh, so this is uh, just a graphing little program I have where I can move this point around and see the coordinates. All the points on the x-axis, let's see, is x equal to 0 there? No, it's that y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0 everywhere here because if you're on the x-axis, you don't move up or down at all, and y is how much you move up or down. And vice versa, if you're on the y-axis, then your y number could be anything depending on what point you're at. Uh, on the y-axis. Here the y is 4, but at all the points on the y-axis x is equal to 0 because you don't move left or right at all. x represents how much you move left or right and that's got to be 0 if you're on the y-axis. So those are those answers. Now let's do an example of using that principle to find the, the intercepts. So if we're going to find the y-intercept to start, that's going to be at a point where x equals 0. So we're going to plug in x equals 0 into the equation and see what y makes that work. So the equation that tells you about the y-intercept is going to have y as a variable with x equals 0. Uh, so to solve this, first of all, 4 times 0 is 0. So we can write this as 3y equals 12. But then let's divide both sides by 3 to get y by itself. And that gives you y equals 4. So we got that by plugging in x equals 0, and we got y equals 4. So the actual point is going to be 0, 4 is the y-intercept. Now let's do the same thing to get the x-intercept. This time, the x-intercept is a point on the x-axis, so you should have y equal to 0 there. So we're going to plug that into the equation and see what x makes it work. And then solving this equation, 3 times 0 is just 0, so we have negative 4x equals 12. We can divide both sides by negative 4. Gives you x equals uh, negative 3. So uh, that's not the actual x-intercept. I want to write it as a point because it is the actual point where x is negative 3 and y is 0. So if we were going to graph this equation, we could make a, a quick and dirty graph kind of like this where there's this point here, negative 3, 0 is the x-intercept, and then the y-intercept is going to be up here. And draw a line through them. Oops. And you can get, oh, that doesn't look very good, a quick and dirty graph doing that method. 